Welcome to North Seed TV. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications for more videos. In their various fields of endeavor. Today we're taking you on a royal journey because my guest today is a man who became, well, perhaps the most important uh, leader, ruler of our people, of humanity at a young age. His story had been foretold even before his birth. Please join me as we welcome on Executive Discuss, His Imperial Majesty, Arole Odudua Oni of Ife, Oni Enito, Babatsunde Adeyeyi Uguusi. He is our guest on the show today. You're welcome to Executive Discuss, Kaviusi. Thank you very much. And thank you for allowing us here. No problem, anytime. of our viewers can you tell us where you were born what your childhood and background was like well to the glory of god i was born into the royal family of gsc ruin house one of the ruin houses in ife the throne of odudua and um, when i was born any time a particular child of some level of importance is being born to the family, a whole lot of concentration will be with that child. So the glory of God, my own story was foretold many decades before I was born. Um, kings are uh, usually born and not made and uh, I found favor in my creator and destiny that I will be born specifically on a Thursday specifically 1 p.m. and there will be a strong scorching sun and the sun will come out so so intense and rain will be falling heavily with a heavy thunderstorm mm. and um, when that kind of child was born or will be born a lot of elders in the royal family will start to leave immediately because they will say they will rather leave the world for the child to to leave because Indeed, our father, one of our phobias is coming back. And to the glory of God, I was born on the Thursday, exactly 1 p.m. And what that was foretold happened. And uh, I started losing a lot of my grand aunts, great grand uncles, even my grandfather, paternal, the maternal side, passed on immediately and uh, we lost quite a lot of elders in, in, in the uh, old royal family and uh, everybody realized that there was something about this child and they, they didn't really take care of me for 11 days because people were so scared that what kind of child is this so they were caught in between naming me Babari Misa what that means in Yoruba land is 
Paul, the elders, saw him and he ran away. Or Papa Chundi. So there was a lot of deliberation on that. Eventually they picked Papa Chundi. And there was a lot of history and mystery around my bath. Because they never knew I would survive. So eventually they gave me a little, a child of history and mystery. So my name, Baba Chundi Adeyeyeye. Adeyeyeye means that the crown befits the child. That truly, truly, a child born into this family, truly crown befits him. And Enito means child of history, mystery, and story. And so my three names, have, they, they, they have very strong meaning. So when I was born, Ever since that time, my life has been full of history till date. Mm, till date. You said you were not cared for in the first 11 days, yet you survived. That's another mystery. Mm. Because immediately I was given back to, they told my mom that her grand, her own father died because wow. of, because she just gave birth and because of the child that mm. the grandfather kept saying that no. I have to leave this world. And uh, my mother of blessed memory had very strong connection with my grandfather. So my mother went unconscious as well. She never knew she would survive it, so she didn't have time for me. It was my auntie that was actually taking care of me. So it affected my eating pattern, even till date. So it was very, it was strangely I survived it, very strangely. Strangely, you survived it. Yes, yeah, strangely, I survived it. You know, after eight days, you have to do the main ceremony. Mine wasn't like that. Because yeah. a lot of pandemonium in the family, a lot of... Everybody was running Elta Skelter. Like, what kind of child is this? So... Wow. That's, that's a really strange story. Very. But, but like you said, strangely, you survived it. And um, you grew to become who you are today. Can you tell us about your educational background? Well, um, I did my primary school in Ibadan. I went to Shubola Nazaria Primary School. Strangely, I left again. I went to Ibadan District Council. Then I went to Loyola College. Strangely, I left again. I came back to Ife. I went to St. Peter's Omi Okun in Ife. And uh, for my tertiary institution, I went to Polytechnic Ibado. I did accountancy. And uh, growing up, a lot of strange things started happening to me. It was very tough eventually for me. I eventually finished school. I started doing my ICANN, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Then I became a qualified accountant. And um, strangely, I said, I'm not going to work again. I started doing, you know, everything about me, I've always, I've always, when everybody's going north, I go south. Every, everybody goes north, I go south. Not by your own making, of course. I don't know, it's just, Happens. instincts will just say, go south. Don't go to every, where everybody is going. So, but to the glory of God, I was able to pull it through. Hmm. I know you were into real estate before um, you ascended the throne. Having come onto the throne as a very young man, permit me to say that, Kabisi, will you say the strange things that had happened as a child and getting into life prepared you for this throne? Yes, I think I absolutely agree to what you just said. I wasn't only into real estate, I was into several other businesses. I was heavily into EPC contracts, engineering, procurement, and construction. I was building factories. When I finished building, I was sell it off. I was into banking. I invested heavily in banking. And basically, I was more doing real estate. Then I did trading as well. I, I was, at some point, a serial entrepreneur. And uh, I, I became a father at age of 19 and uh, it was very strange to all my my contemporaries and uh, it was a minus then because they would think oh, how can you 
of this age be a father. father. And uh, that actually prepared me mentally from youthful exuberance, okay. things, and uh, you know, it was a blessing. God brought it at that time for mm -hmm. me, for me to just calm down yes. and be focused in everything I will be doing. When I got to this throne, I now realized that really and truly, it hasn't been by my might nor by my power. God actually saw me through growing up in the midst of my parents. Everybody would just push me aside and I would say to some elderly people, don't go out, something will happen to you and it will happen to them. And people will come to my, my father, my mother's house. They will say I should pray concerning their business, they give me biscuits, give me all sorts of things, but I should just pray for them. And uh, I will collect, and my parents will beat me again, and uh, I will go behind them, I will just, I didn't know what I was doing, but I don't know what they saw, but they would just tell me I should, they will kill, and started giving me all sorts of things. So that prepared me at what age? At age five, age six. Very elderly people will come that I should just say a word to them. Hmm. And they will give me a biscuit and I will be looking at that biscuit. You're not realizing no. it. Really. It was when I got to this throne I realized that God has actually been with me for a long time. But did uh, that not bring about sibling rivalry for you? Well, yes, but I've always been a very serious child. So to say that, hmm. you know, I, I just very carefree and uh, a lot of things actually shielded that thing but um, people that understand some very strong spiritual potential in people will know but uh, I've not really had anything with a lot of ease in my life it's been struggle mm. but at the end of the day I will come round and uh, well sibling rivalry yeah, I was, I will cause problem among all my siblings, siblings. and I will just get out of it and, uh, well, I've been active since, I remember everything that happened to me from age five till date. Wow. It's very, honestly speaking, wow. I think it's a gift of God and oh. God has actually prepared me for those challenges from age of five. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids growing up will not remember such, never, mm -hmm. never. but I, I, I think I am blessed. God actually blessed me for that. So Indeed. that has actually prepared me. Indeed. Till date. On the lighter note, so it's safe to say that Kabiesi was a naughty child growing up. Well, naughty in a very positive way. <laughs> I'll say naughty in a very positive way. I, 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 I like to be very inquisitive. Okay. I used to pry a lot. I used to pry. There's, you know, when I was young, I used to you know, I would see TV moving and I want to see what's inside the TV. And I will put it down, I'll put everything down. Oh, goodness. I'll put down the radio. Honestly, oh, it used to be a problem for me. Yeah. I'll do it and I'll have difficulty reassembling it. I, when I was a kid, they told me when I was like three years old or four years old that I'll see a bright light like this and I'll be looking what happened to this light and I'll dip my hand inside and I would get electrocuted. Mm -hmm. It happened to me. So they gave me a nickname Nepa when I was like four <laughs> years old or three years old. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, a lot of things, a lot yes. of things. Very interesting going on. Mm. Indeed, your childhood was interesting in its own way. Absolutely. Your Imperial Majesty, you've spoken so much about your interesting childhood where so much has happened. Why don't you just um, hold it a bit there? because we want to go out there to speak with a few people about you. The program is still executive discuss. It's time for us to meet some family members and close associates of His Imperial Majesty to know who he was as a child and how he has come to ascend the throne of his fathers. Please come with us. During his formative years, we could see lots of changes. The strange way that uh, he was really exhibiting. Now, being the fact that uh, he's the fifth of the seven children, 
that we are blessed with. We thank God for every one of them and we give glory and thanks to the Almighty God for His seven grace because everything is by grace. You don't need to really teach him anything before he knows it. In fact, even driving, by the time he was growing up, nobody taught him how to drive. We never knew that he used to watch, he would keep on watching like this. And the moment you leave the place, you just assume what you have been doing, without any hitch, without any blemish. That name I did, was given to him by my father. And all the problems we passed through, this, that, the way, before we gave back to him, and shortly after, and that was why the mother named him Enita. Uh, let me come up with one Yoruba adage too. Omotuba maje ashamu kikiri lutman tiche shamu shamu. You see, he has shown that trait to become great, trait of greatness. Um, he has displayed unparalleled wisdom, and wisdom comes from God. Then, very inquisitive, very hardworking, he wants to know everything. At a tender age, uh, when, when he was young, he was the one that makes uh, most of the, of the shoes for the house. Very talented, he was a cobbler, <laughs> he was everything, he wants to know everything. Very inquisitive guy and hardworking and very, very, very smart. He normally gets away with all, uh, from the trouble. <laughs> he knows how to walk in, himself out of trouble with my mom or my dad. Honestly speaking, uh, he hasn't changed because he's still young. Very useful, uh, useful, useful. I see more by. Describing Kabi Esioni Adeye Enita Oguse is a very loving brother, jovial, kind, and very, very generous. We're very close, very, very close. Um, he has listening hairs, even while we're growing up, and is ready to do anything I ask of him. He likes to see people happy, most especially his people. Um, if you walk up to him not happy, you leave his place being happy. He hardly gets angry. And um, he's a very jovial person, but um, when it's time to work, he's serious with his work. So he doesn't mix pleasure with his work. Um, he's a loving husband, um, he's a gentle man. Um, he has a very strong personality though. And contrary to what people would expect of um, a monarch of his status, uh, Kabi is, is, um, is romantic and is quite forgiving. His driving force is his love for humanity. That's the first thing on his mind every day he wakes up. He just wants to help people. He wants everyone around him to be happy and, you know. Uh, from my perspective, uh, well, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't get enough rest. Uh, almost like he doesn't at all. And um, when it comes to food, he's, um, I don't know, almost like he doesn't eat. <laughs> And it's very down to it. Very, very. It gets to a point that people will sometimes take him for granted because of that. Who better to have heard about His Imperial Majesty from than his father and other members of his family? Surely he had an interesting childhood and is still living in interesting times here on the throne of his fathers. Your Imperial Majesty, we've heard so much from the members of your family. You've been on the throne now for some years. What has the experience been like, especially coming onto the throne at a young age? I give all the glory to God Almighty, like I said. 
and um, the spirit of my ancestors. Uh, God really helped me. Like I told you, I've been a, a molded child in a particular way. So, Yoruba people were very, very exposed, very complicated in our thinking. So, for you to coordinate things, it's always very difficult. And uh, I had to use a lot of wisdom to deal with very older people. And I came up with a policy that I am a king, but I'm not old. Whenever you are a king, that doesn't mean that you are old. You might be sitting on a very ancient throne, but that doesn't mean that you are old. So, healthy behavior and kingship behavior are two different things. So you have to seek the face of the elders for you to know how to behave as a king and as an elderly person. So to the glory of God, it was tough. Very tough. But God really helped me to, to see it through. Manage expectations back and forth. Manage those elderly people. You know, and um, I'm still learning. So the good, the bad, and the ugly is there. But, um, you know, it's not easy to sit on the oldest throne. The spiritual headquarters for the entire race is Ife. And the Oni of Ife is a deity. Nobody sees Oni. Even every king that comes, they have to tie a rope. A rope. And they only hear the voice of Oni. And anything Oni sees is worth all the people that migrated from Ife will say because only gave everybody crown. Mm. Kingship system was actually properly established right from the throne all the way to Ethiopia okay. because the first king in Ethiopia of about 4000 B B BC was called Ori Awoko. Okay. And all the way to because people in Ethiopia are called Kemet, they migrated to start Egypt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Egyptian crown, you, these are things you won't see anywhere. Egyptian crown is pharaoh, is pharaoh, pharaohs, mm. and they don't do anything without the 401 deities in Ife, 200 to the left, 200 to the right. The one on top of it is the king of all of Ife, which is the Ari crown. So, we have a very strong structure. So, going back to going to Oyo, we know Oyo, Ife has never been a dynasty that goes about imperialism, conquering territories. Mm. But two kingdoms, which Ife is in between, the kingdom of Benin and the kingdom of Oyo, mm. Ife is right in the middle. You can never hear it in history that kingdom of Benin and kingdom of Oyo, they face each other. Never. It's never happened before. Mm. They all know their boundary. Ife is right in the middle. Okay. So my point is, those two kingdoms are one of the most powerful kingdoms out of the entire continent of Africa. Mm. So you have to give honor to whom honor is due. So both of them have military might. But the spiritual might for the two of them is Ife. Okay. Because they got their monarchy from Ife. Mm. So we have to unite and forget about supremacy. Mm. Ife is not known to take over territories. No. At some point, the entire land is Ile Ife, land of expansion, before they started cutting to boundaries. Or you're here, Benin here. Mm -hmm. And at some point in the whole of continent of Africa, we have less than 14 kingdoms and two. Kingdom of Ife is right in the middle, and two main kingdoms are part of those 14 kingdoms. Benin Empire and Oyo Empire. Out of 14, we had the Shanghai Empire, we had the one from Mansa Musa, the Malian Empire, and so many other, you know, empire that the Western people divided us. So it's, it's, it's critical for you to know that we all belong to one big happy family. So the military might for the Yoruba people are the Oyo people. So I had to go so that we will forge unity 
for us to go back to those days the way we all used to work together because we all belong to the same one big happy family. So I did that. And to the glory of God, a welcome development for all and sundry. So for unity for Yoruba land, we continue to forge ahead concerning unity. The Yoruba nation is one which is rich, very, very rich in culture and tradition. And um, it looks like our cultures and traditions are gradually being eroded, especially from the home front. We can hardly find a lot of our children who know our history as detailed as they should. What can we do? Where have we gone wrong? And how can we correct the situation? Well, a lot of places where we've gone wrong. If they teach history in school now, they will say, who discovered Mongo Park? My, 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 River Niger. They will say it's Mongo Park. River Niger that we know as Odo Oya, hmm. Oya River, that has been there from time immemorial. But they will say one man from uh, the Western world discovered it. Is it possible? It's not possible. From Portugal. They came and they discovered a river. No. Oh, the oldest person in the world ever lived was Methuselah, 962 years. No. There was a king on this throne of Oni of Ive that ruled for 2,200 years. Wow. If you ask, nobody knew about for Bobo Dini in history. There was a king that ruled for 420 years on this throne. And nobody knows this history hmm. because the colonization era of about 400 years affected us. It made us not to tell our story. We have it in our oral history in Ifa. It's there, everything. The, Yuba, the Igbos will call it Afa. The people, the Chukuns, the thieves will call it Afa. People all the way from Shanghai Empire will call it Afa too. We call it Ifa. All the way to Sudan, they call it Ifa. All the way to uh, southern Egypt. We have a lot of Yorubas there. They call it Ifa. It's a common thing for everybody in continent of Africa. But they will tell you it's bad. It's a bad thing. Don't go there. They are demonic. Hmm. That's what they are doing. So how are we going to learn our history? So it's important for us to learn our history. And how? We have to tell our story by ourselves. Nobody can tell our story for us. So that's the reason why we are losing such values. But we are trying our best to tell our story the way it is, actually. Now, coming uh, still on the throne here, Kapisi, you, like I said earlier, came onto the throne as a young man. And then um, you've carried, you've shouldered huge responsibilities trying to drive the Yoruba nation and of course by extension Africa as a whole. In all that you've been able to do, what has been your most challenging um, footsteps which you have taken? Well, what you have just said now, telling our story. When I tried to push it, people would bring Bibikla and Quranic means, mm. and they will say, Kabisi is not, is talking off point. Mm. Very challenging to change the narratives mm. from our people. That look, it's very important for you to know who we are. It's very important. Don't let religion be cloud you. It's a fact. You can check it out. It's a very challenging thing. People just, why are we, why haven't we grown in Africa? It's because we are doing things that we're not supposed to do. And we live in the midst of milk and honey. If you wash tomatoes in your house, throw it to your back, backyard. It's in three days, it will grow. Yes. Where can it happen anywhere in the world? Where? Mm. It's not possible anywhere. They must apply fertilizer, apply this, apply that. So my point is, that has been the major challenge. Because I'm here to let us know who we are as the black people, the Yoruba people. I 
I'm not after supremacy, no. And I want to inculcate and imbibe that thing into our youth. It's very difficult to change their orientation, to reorient it, Nigerian youth. Difficult. But the throne is dedicated to them. So I see the good, I see the bad, and I see the ugly. So I'm not going to relent. Like I told you, I've always been a fighter from day one. I like to take up very huge challenges. So God will help me. Your Imperial Majesty, I honestly do not envy you at all wearing this crown and administering your people. But um, let's take a pause on this discussion as we want to go out there to meet a few of your friends and some of your subjects because indeed we need to find out who His Imperial Majesty is as a friend and of course as a leader. Let's get to meet these individuals. The then Prince Adeye Enitogosi um, is also, in my opinion and in my view, the same person before the ascension of his uh, of the throne of his forebears. He he's always demonstrated the exact same way uh, things, and qualities, and you know the qualities in him. Um, what we see now, what, is, what, what we see playing out now, is he has always been the same. Uh, we just didn't know. Uh, he's, he's a very pragmatic human being, um, a, a teacher, a learner at the same time. And um, to him, mankind is pretty much his passion. He likes to see his fellow human being happy. It's a special need from God. In time of humanity, he loves people as his own. I can even say said he loves people than himself. Because whatever you get to him, say car be a CEO, this is my problem. I want this, I want that. The next thing you hear from Baba Oni is Otisheshe. I've never seen him regret anybody say, I'm sorry, maybe you can come tomorrow. No. Apple as a new person on the throne. We chiefs, we go to him, Baba. This is how this is supposed to be. Say, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Immediately, he will comply with us. He will comply. Even though we are all man being, nobody above mistake. But it's, a, it's somebody that God has sent. I've never seen somebody or a leader in his, uh, in his capacity as flexible as the only of his. I've never seen. And uh, this is not an exaggeration. He's very flexible. And uh, we do refer to his flexibility as even over flexibility. But in spite of that, he has always told us that he came into this world very humbly. He has achieved all he has achieved very humbly. He got to the reign of Odudua very humbly. And he's going to live the rest of his life very, very humbly. Nothing can change him from being flexible, from being simple, and from being uh, humble with the people that God has made him to come and uh, lead as a father. interesting to have such an intelligent leader at the helm of affairs of the entire Yoruba race. It's still executive discuss and we still have with us His Imperial Majesty the Oni Ovife Oni Adeyeyi Enito Ogusi Ojaja the second. Kabeisi Oni of Ife is a man who is seen, in fact in some quarters it's believed that uh, you're too visible as a king. <laughs> oh, there. I wonder why. Well, that's who I am. I told you ever since I was because a king. Because you're always around. You attend functions more than perhaps what we're used to seeing. Of well, I will tell you something again. 
It has always been my lifestyle. If I attend one function, everybody will say I've attended 10 functions. Mm. I've not left this palace in three months. And yet you read about me every day. Every day. I haven't stepped out of this palace. Mm. Yes, in three months. I haven't. I moved around for fumigation, for environmental sanitation. To the glory of God, huge success. We were able to distribute throughout the every corner of Nigeria. We were able to cover it. But I did that for my own bit three months ago. I've not moved, but you read about me every day. Every day. But it's okay, I understand. It's, it comes with the throne and it comes with my spirit head. It has always been like that ever since I'm, I'm a young I'm a young kid. So um, if it's very positive and impactful mm. to the youth of this country, why not? So be it. So you want me to keep and go inside? Even if I go inside. No, I didn't say so. Please. Maybe you want me to do. No, I, didn't say I just that. told you I've been <laughs> confined to my throne. For the last three months, you don't believe it. No, I didn't say I didn't believe no, it. No, 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 because I know that people they just want to read my story. Now, we see in my time here waiting to have this chat with you, I see that people have been coming in and going out, and you've been attending to people. How do you how are you able to administer your people? How are you able to create a lot of harmony? peace in the town and of course amongst the people generally well i will say that's another grace of god you know i'm a very approachable king the throne is very approachable to people and uh, when you're approachable like that the good ones will come the bad ones will come so i just made up my mind that i'm a dust being oh. so it's in my psyche so they will throw all sorts of gifts inside dustbin. You forget to throw money inside dustbin. It's happened to a lot of people. You think you are throwing trash, but it's money. It's gift. You throw trash. It's gift. Dustbin must collect gifts. That's the nature of dustbin. So for me, it has really worked for me. And that's the reason why, in fact, we are curtailing it. Okay. If we don't curtail it, at some point, I tried it the first two years. I used to receive, I'm not joking, between two to three thousand people a day. Wow. Yes. Ask. Ask, they will tell you. Wow. Oh, yes. So we have to just curtail it. Too many problems. Hmm. Too many problems in the society. So you, leadership is about stewardship. When you think you are a dustbin, you will achieve a lot in life. So it has really helped me. It's been very helpful to me. What drives you as an individual? Oh. Outside of being a judge of the second. What drives you as an individual and then being cabbage? When everybody is successful, when I see people that are successful, I'm always very excited. I love success. I love fulfilling dreams. Nothing else in this world. I don't, I don't care about money. I cannot become anything again in life. I cannot. You are here now. You want to aspire to be the general manager of NTA. Or you want to start your own TV station. Or you want to do this. I, who do I want to become? There is nothing again. I've gotten to the peak of anything I want to become in life. So my joy is when I see people from nothing to something. That's my joy. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to thumbs it up and subscribe for more videos.